Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. We have a quarter circle and we have a semicircle that's inscribed in the quarter circle in the following fashion. The arc of the semicircle is just tangent to the arc of the quarter circle and the endpoints of the diameter of the semicircle are along the two adjacent radii of the quarter circle. If the distance between the center of the quarter circle and one of the endpoints of the diameter of the semicircle is equal to one, then what fraction of the quarter circle is shaded? In other words, what is the ratio of the semicircle's area to the quarter circle's area? I saw this interesting problem on QMath. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So how can we solve this problem? To get started, I'm going to review two important concepts. The first is the circumcenter of a right triangle, and the second has to do with tangent circles. So let's get started with the circumcenter of a right triangle. We will show that the circumcenter of a right triangle is the midpoint of its hypotenuse. So let's say we have a right triangle with vertices A, B, and C. Let's say C is the right angle, so that AB is the hypotenuse. Now let's construct the circumcircle, which is the unique circle which passes through the points A, B, and C. Now let's say that O is the center of the circle. Now whatever the location of O is, we know that the distance from O to the points A, B, and C has to be some fixed distance. If O is the center of the circle, then it's the same distance to all of the points on the circle. A, B, and C are on the circle. So we must have that OA is equal to OB is equal to OC. And we're going to show that O is exactly the midpoint of the hypotenuse AB. So how do we do that? So let's go to triangle ABC. Alongside C, we will construct the perpendicular bisector. So the perpendicular bisector of the side AC will form a right angle with the side AC and it will bisect the side AC. So this distance will be exactly the same as this distance. Now let's label this point as D. So we have AD is equal to DC, and we have a right angle at the point D. Let's label the intersection of the perpendicular bisector with the hypotenuse AB as the point O. Now what can we say about the point O? Well notice that OA is equal to OC, because the point O is along the perpendicular bisector of AC. Every point on the perpendicular bisector of AC will be equidistant from the points A and C. Therefore, OA is equal to OC. Now, we have a triangle which is exactly similar to the entire large triangle ACB. We have a right angle and we have a shared angle A. So triangle ADO is exactly a scaled copy of the triangle ACB. In particular, the two triangles are similar and the ratio is in the following. AD to AC is equal to one to two because AD is exactly half the length of AC. Therefore, the same must be true along the hypotenuse that this is equal to AO over AB. But this directly implies that AO is equal to OB. So we have shown that OA is equal to OB. So let's put this together with the fact that OA is equal to OC. We have that OA is equal to OC and OA is equal to OB. So all three lengths are equal to each other. And this is exactly the condition to form the circumcenter. And furthermore, O is also the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Therefore, the midpoint of the hypotenuse is the circumcenter of the right triangle. Now let's review another concept. If two circles are tangent, their centers and the tangent point are collinear. So let's say we have circles A and B that are tangent at the point T. Now in order to show this, let's construct the tangent line going through T. Let's construct the radius AT and it will be perpendicular to the tangent line but we also have that the radius BT will be perpendicular to the tangent line as well. So now let's look at the line ATB. We have two right angles at the point T, 
and therefore, the measure of angle ATB will be 180 degrees, 90 plus 90. In other words, ATB is a straight line segment. In other words, the centers of the circles and the tangent point are collinear. They're all on the same line. This is true for both externally tangent circles and internally tangent circles. So now let's solve the problem. We need to solve for the fraction of the quarter circle that's shaded. To get started, let's label some points. Let's say that this point is A, and the other endpoint of this semicircle is B. So the diameter of the semicircle is AB. Let C be the center of the quarter circle. Let's label the center of the semicircle as the point D. Since we have the center here, we have that AD is equal to DB. We also have a right triangle, ABC. Angle C is a right angle because we have a quarter circle. The point D is the midpoint of the hypotenuse AB. So therefore, it is the circumcenter of the triangle ABC. We already have the semicircle will be one half of this circumcircle. So let's just construct the other half, which will go through the points A, B, and C. Now, let's label the tangent point between the semicircle and the quarter circle as the point T. Both the semicircle and the quarter circle have a tangent point T, so their centers and the tangent point will be collinear. So C, D, and T will be collinear. So let's construct C, D, T. Since D is the circumcenter, we also have that DC is equal to DA is equal to DB. But then in the red semicircle, we also have that DT is a radius of that. So let's analyze what we figured out. Let's say the radius of the semicircle is equal to R. Let's say that's DT. We also know that DC will also be equal to R. But then CT is a radius of the quarter circle. So we're pretty much ready to solve the problem. Let's do the calculation. Let's first figure out the area of the semicircle. What will this area be equal to? The radius is equal to R, so it will be equal to pi R squared multiplied by 1 half, because we want half the area. Now let's figure out the area of the quarter circle. This will be the area of the entire circle divided by 4. The radius of the entire quarter circle will be equal to 2R, so we have the area is equal to pi multiplied by the square of 2R, and then we want to divide this by 4. This simplifies to be equal to 4 pi r squared divided by 4, which works out to be pi r squared. We now just calculate the ratio of these areas. The ratio of the area of the semicircle to that of the quarter circle is equal to pi r squared divided by 2 divided by pi r squared, which equals 1 half. In other words, the fraction that's shaded is equal to 1 half. And that's the answer. But there's something even more interesting in this question. Let's take a look at our original problem. There is no condition on what the radius length of the quarter circle can be. So in fact, this is true regardless of what the length of the radius of the quarter circle is. We can imagine increasing the radius of the quarter circle and we will still have the fraction shaded of the semicircle is equal to 1 half. Now just to show this even more, let's just scale this down and we're going to continue to increase the radius of the quarter circle. In all of these cases, the fraction shaded is still equal to 1 half. Now let's return to the beginning. Another interesting thing about our derivation is nowhere did we use the detail that this length was equal to 1. So the result will actually be true for all sorts of distances. We can imagine that we just move this semicircle inside of the quarter circle in all of these cases, the fraction of area that's shaded will still be equal to one half. So this is quite an interesting result, and it is an incredible problem. Wow. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.